Hello and welcome to the Solar Professor video series. I am Steve Geiger, your Solar Professor. And today we're going to talk about something super important for those folks interested in taking the NABCEP exam. This video is part of my NABCEP uh, series and it is what you need to know specifically uh, if you're interested in taking any of the um, photovoltaic related NABCEP exams. Today we're going to be talking about the first topic um, of the four topics that you must know for this particular exam. Um, NABCEP again stands for North American Board of Certified Energy Practitioners. You can just go to nabcep.org to find out more information. Um, but today we're going to be talking about STC or standard test conditions. So without further ado, let's dive right in. Um, what I want to do as far as learning objectives here with this particular video are three things. Basic, you know, provide a basic understanding of what STC means, what it's used for, and then of course how it compares to uh, some other test conditions. And then I actually have a, a quick sample problem uh, that you may see on the NABCEP exam. So let's get started here. Uh, first of all, what is standard test conditions? Blam, it's right there for you. That was kind of loud. Um, I have it in red. Also, you know, as with all of my other videos, I do have this presentation posted um, under the instructional area on uh, my website, which is solarprofessor.info. It's not .com. It's actually solarprofessor.info. Um, standard test conditions is 1,000 watts per meter squared with an air mass of 1.5 at 25 degrees centigrade. Okay, um, this is what it breaks down to. Let's let's break the let's break it into pieces to um, to get a better understanding of it. First of all, is a thousand watts per meter squared. That is basically the irradiance. That is the power of the sun. That's the sun's rays coming down, and it's power per unit area of that sunlight. Um, I actually have a reference meter here. This particular one is uh, manufactured by Daystar. It's very commonly used in the industry. And it takes a 9 volt battery. It actually has a reference solar cell right on, on the um, front of it, if you, can, if you can see that on the top of it right there. Um, and you simply turn it on, and then it's going to give you a, a reading of the light. Now, here in my studio, the studio lighting is not super bright. When you're pointing it directly at the sun, um, what we're looking for is how close are we to standard test conditions, to a thousand watts per meter square. Now we'll, we'll as we continue the conversation here today, uh, we'll get further into it. Alright, air mass 1.5. Basically air mass is the thickness or density of the air that the sun's rays have to travel through um, from extraterrestrial through terrestrial to get to the solar module and therefore strike the solar cell and excite those electrons and get them moving and producing energy. Um, modules rarely are flat. If they were flat, maybe we could you know, move that number more towards one. But atmosphere is going to be a little bit thicker because we're taking a measurement at basically 35 uh, degrees north latitude, that means the solar panels are at an angle of about 35 degrees. That's a good average for what an angle of a solar panel might be on a roof or in a ground mount system or uh, other things like that. And I know, trust me, I know it varies for those of you out here, uh, out there who have been in solar for a while, um, you know, ground mounts are usually at 20 degrees and, and such, but this is the number that's being used for air mass to be at uh, 1.5. And then of course the last thing here is 25 degrees um, centigrade, which is also 77 degrees uh, Fahrenheit. And that gives you kind of an idea of, of, of what you're feeling out there. Most of um, the temperatures are measured in the United States at uh, Fahrenheit. And we know what 77 feels like. Uh, it's kind of a mild day, really. That is the actual cell temperature. So when the sunlight is striking that cell, the cell itself, and you can measure that with um, there's various uh, um, temperature meters, there's infrared temperature meters you can use uh, to measure the cell temperature. Um, bottom line is STC is used to compare the performance uh, characteristics from uh, one module to the next, one manufacturer to the next. Um, and that gives us a standard used industry-wide as the comparison. And that's basically what it's for. 
All right, a couple more things I do want to mention, so let's move on through. You know, there's various test conditions uh, in the industry. These are identified in the book, and you know I, I love the book, especially for those who are taking the NABSIP exam. Uh, Photovoltaic Systems uh, by James Dunlop. I have the third edition here. It is the solar manual for folks taking the NABSEP exam. It's a fantastic read. You really should read the whole thing um, cover to cover, all 15 chapters if you're going to be uh, taking that NABSEP exam. But again, I'm giving you these videos to just give you a quick abridged version of some of the um, material in there. Uh, so various test conditions, uh, there's a couple of others listed here. You can see we've got them listed here on an IV curve. In another video I'm going to explain what an IV curve is and how it works, but you can see over here we've got current and voltage listed. And standard test conditions, uh, you know, it's out there. It's providing more power than the other ones. And so um, that's, that's of interest to us. And let me show you why. Okay. Here are some of the other um, test conditions. And this, I know this is tiny for video viewers, but again, you can see it um, on my website, solarprofessor.info. You can, you can download this and actually see it. We have a standard operating conditions here that is showing our 1,000 watts per meter squared. Nominal operating conditions is a little bit different. So nominal, we're seeing um, 800 watts per meter squared. You can see how that could change the ball game. Um, on the IV curve that was previously shown over here. Okay, so nominal is, is down here. It's the difference between the red line and the orange line. Um, then we have nominal operating cell temperature, which is what uh, nominal operating conditions is measured um, upon. And that um, provides a ambient temperature, which is different than standard test conditions as well. That's only 20 degrees C instead of 25 degrees C. Um, also, this is measured at open circuit voltage, and really that's when, when the um, uh, module is at a, a inert state. Okay? Um, over here, we have a wind speed added as well. Uh, here's PVUSA test conditions, or we call it um, PTC. Some, some of us in the industry refer to it as practical test conditions. Um, that is also 1,000 watts per meter squared, but that's 45 degrees um, centigrade. So that's uh, a little hotter. To be honest with you, that makes more sense. It depends on where you are in the United States, of course, but that's a more extreme situation for us than 25 degrees C. And trust me, um, solar panels up on the roof, um, especially in uh, the California area, northern or even southern California, solar panels can, can get well over 100 degrees, their cell temperatures um, on the roof. I've measured them at, at 140 degrees before up on the roof. So, um, interesting situation. But for the, the NABSEP exam, we want to know what standard test conditions is. We want to memorize it. Again, 1,000 watts per meter squared, air mass 1.5, and the temperature is 25 degrees C. That's right. All right, I want to close really quickly, and I'd like to do this in some of the other videos that I'm going to do for NAPSEP preparation, is do a quick sample type question that you might see on the NAPSEP exam. And here it goes. Uh, a reference meter is measuring 600 watts per meter squared, and the module output is 200 watts. What would the expected output be at standard test conditions? So that's the reference meter right here. It's reading 600 watts. Don't worry about the time of day right now. Um, here's how the answer goes. All right? If standard test conditions are 1,000 watts per meter squared, we know that. Um, then 600 watts per meter squared um, is only producing, that module is only producing 60% of its nameplate rating. Right? The math can be done this way. 600 divided by 1,000 equals 60% right there. Therefore, the module is losing 40% of its power. All right? Um, equation would be in this case to figure out the final answer 200 watts multiply that by the 40 percent and then you're going to get a difference uh, uh, an answer of 80 watts that's what it's losing okay you need to add that 80 watts back to the 200 and you get a total of 280 watts um, being produced at standard test conditions very similar type problems the wordings may, may be a little bit different on uh, the NABSEP exam, but you're going to get similar type thought processes um, when you're taking uh, the NABSEP exam and you're going to see some of those types of questions there. All right, 
Um, that really kind of narrows it down um, for standard test conditions. I've hopefully I've simplified it uh, for for you guys for a, a better understanding. And again, any questions, um, please go ahead and send me an email. You can, there's a link to my email at uh, solarprofessor.info. And of course, if you can uh, like this video, I'd really appreciate that. And uh, we'll see you on the next video. Thank you so much.